Hey guys, Brendan Productions here, and welcome to my second dictionary tutorial. Um, in my first dictionary tutorial, that is using dictionaries in visualbasic.net, uh, I went over the basic functionality of dictionaries and a basic application of dictionaries. Now, a little while back, uh, someone actually asked me if I could do a video on how to make some sort of swear filter for a, uh, a Microsoft Word type program. Well, uh, usually swear filters will be done with would be done with dictionaries. So in this tutorial, I will be teaching a or creating a swear filter and um, using a dictionary to do so. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do, of course, is if we want a swear filter to filter out a Microsoft Word style program, we're going to want to actually create a rich text box inside of our form here. So I'm just going to go ahead and find a rich text box, drag it in and then dock it so it uh, is full form. So now we've basically got a form with a rich text box in it. So now I'm just going to rename the rich text box to RTB for simplicity purposes and now we can actually go ahead and get started. So this swear filter is actually going to be designed around um, around a dictionary and the dictionary is going to contain a uh, a word that needs to be replaced and then a list of alternatives and these alternatives will be randomly selected um, and uh, chosen from to replace a, uh, a certain word so let's go ahead and jump right into the code here so the first thing we actually want to do is we want to create a dictionary that will hold all of our swear words and alternative words so I'm just going to create a private variable called private swear dictionary as dictionary and it's going to contain of string because the key here are going to be words that need to be replaced now in our last tutorial our uh, values were all strings however values can range anything from strings to complex objects and one interesting functionality of the dictionary is its ability to hold arrays as keys so instead of just having a one-to-one -one function in a dictionary we can actually have a one-to-five function or one to six function in a dictionary um, by replacing uh, the value with an array. However, in uh, in pr programmatically, it's a one to one ratio because it is a string to an array. But value uh, in value, it is pretty much one to five. So what we can do is we can just say that we want this to be an array of strings by delineating um, a open and close parenthesis right after the string here. Now, when our form loads we're actually going to want to populate our swear dictionary with the um, words and their alternatives. So I'm just going to create a new method called populate swear dictionary dictionary and in this method I'm actually going to um, create a new instance of the dictionary and add our swear words and our alternatives. So we can just say swear dictionary equals new dictionary and it's going to contain of string and an array of strings. Now, because this is a tutorial, and I don't want to be blabbing my mouth saying um, profanity, uh, pro yeah, swear words every uh, 10 seconds or so, I'm going to pretend that some words are actually profanity. So um, in order to do this, well, not in order to do this, I'm just going to come up with uh, a few words. Let's look around here. So we've got book. Um, say I'm illiterate and I hate reading books. Uh, so book will be one of our swear words. So let's go ahead and add that in now. So we are now going to add the swear values. So we can say swear dictionary dot add, and we first need to specify the key. So I'm just going to say book. Now I'm going to keep this all in lowercase um, just for simplicity purposes here. And then um, our value as an array of strings um, is going to be alternatives to book. Now, whenever you um, actually specify a uh, values in an array you need to use curly braces so we're going to specify a certain amount of values inside of this string array and they're all going to have certain values themselves so um, we open and close these curly braces in order to state that these are the values within the array so alternatives to book um, let's just say this is this was a very bad example because an alternative to a book. Um, let's just say people call a book pages because it is essentially just a bunch of pages. So then um, after you create one entry in the array you separate it by a comma and then create another entry. So pages um, 
a book contains a is essentially a list of words. Um, let's see. What else is a book? Um, a story. Um, a non-fictional or fictional account. Uh, they can also be literature, if you will. And let's also call them a novel. So this, right, and then we're just going to close off the parentheses of our add statement. So all we created here is we entered in our dictionary book and then a list of alternatives to the word book. Now in order to actually spice things up, let's add another swear word into our dictionary. So let's just say keyboard is a swear word here. And now we're going to list some alternatives. So it is a typing machine. It's an input device. Um, uh, what else is it? It's a noise maker. <laughs> um, however, it could also be a piano, or a type of piano, rather. Um, hopefully you guys aren't music people, and you get mad at me for not being able to tell the difference between a piano and a keyboard. Um, keyboard. Let's just leave it at that. So now we close off our array and close off the parentheses for our add statement. And now our populate swear dictionary method, um, which we will call when the form loads, actually fills in um, our swear words and a list of alternatives. So this is definitely a complex looking piece of code. However, all we're doing is we're specifying a key and several values that this key is mapped to um, that actually serve as replacements. So now we can get into actually um, actually f uh, replacing our s uh, replacing swear words that have been typed into the rich text box with um, their alternatives. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click on the rich text box to access the rich text box text changed method. Um, so what we're going to do is every time uh, the text is changed in a rich text box, we want to see if the rich text box contains a word that's actually listed as a swear word. So we're going to say uh, for each word as uh, as string in rich no it's rtb dot text if oh so for each word in string as string in rtb dot text now we want to make sure they're words so um, we're going to actually split them with spaces here because words are delineated by spaces in the English language. So we're splitting up the rich text box by spaces and um, for each actual value that's separated by a space, if the word equals um, or oh you know what you know what I'm gonna do instead? There's actually a better way to do this. So I'm actually going to scroll through the swear dictionary's list of keys and then check if the rich text box contains uh, one of these keys. So we're going to say for each swear swear word as string in swear dictionary dot keys um, if rtb dot text dot contains swear word then so right here this code we need to replace the swear word. So we've scanned the uh, text box, it contains a swear word that we've actually listed, and now what we need to do is replace it. So, um, the first thing we need to do in replacing a swear word is we actually need to, as we type into a rich text box, our cursor moves from uh, left to right. So if we actually replace a, uh, a word that, um, that needs to be replaced, we need to make sure that we retain our cursor's position. Um, if that makes any sense. So what we're going to do is first save the actual cursor's position. So we're going to say dim cursor position as integer int equal to rtb dot selection start. Now this is basically the code here for when the actual selection starts, so where your cursor is inside of the rich text box. So now what we need to do is essentially replace the um, the swear word that uh, that we found with a swear word in our swear dictionary. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, save the length of a uh, of the swear word. So this is going to change it as the user is typing. So it's the swear word is not going to be located several miles away from where the cursor is unless the value is actually pasted in, which in that case it's going to mess things up a little bit, so we're not going to even account for that uh, in this video. So the next thing we need to do is we're actually going to say rtb.text.replace and we're going to replace all instances of swear word with um, a new value. Now the thing is though we have multiple values of what this swear word can be replaced with. So we actually want to get a random value um, of our, our array. So what we can do is we can actually use visualbasic.net's random function in order to get a random value of the array. So we're going to say dim random value as integer equal to rnd. Now this generates a, um, a random number from 0 to 1 but not containing 1. And then we're going to multiply that by the number of elements that is actually in the, um, the array here. So this is just the basic programmatic way of getting a, a random value from an array. So we're going to say times swear dictionary dot item and the key is going to be our swear word here um, and this is going to be dot length so we're getting the length of the array so now we have a random number that will actually correspond to an index within the swear word alternative array and now we can say dim replacement word as string equal to swear dictionary dot item um, swear word and then we are going to get the uh, array item with an index of random value. So essentially what we're doing is we're creating a random index here based off of how many alternatives there are in our array and then we're using that random index to actually get a random alternative. So now that we have a random alternative and it is stored in the um, the text value or the string value replacement word we can just say rtb.text equals rtb.text.replace and we're going to replace swear word with replacement word. And now finally what we need to do is we actually need to get our um, move our cursor over. So uh, our cursor position will stay in the same spot that uh, that it was in. Now what we're doing is we're actually going to be replacing a uh, perhaps smaller or bigger word with a word of a different size. So we're going to need to move the cursor over um, to the right or to the left. So in order to get the value of how many ticks we need to move it over, we're going to say dim move integer as integer, and we're just going to get the size difference between the two words. So this is going to be replacement word dot length minus swear word dot length and then once we do that we are going to um, since this is our move integer we're just going to move the cursor over by a um, by this specified value so now we're going to say um, rtb dot selection start equals and we saved our old cursor position so now we can simply change it so cursor position plus move integer. So this corresponds that the move integer will be positive or negative based on the word difference between the uh, or the length difference between the words and then we're just going to move the cursor right over. So now we can actually go ahead and test out our code by running the application. So as you recall the two swear words that we inserted were book and keyboard. So I'm just going to type I have read a book and as you see our code simply replaces book with literature, which in this case it doesn't make sense, I have read a literature, but then it moves the cursor right over. So I have read a literature and it sounded like a keyboard. So as you can see we've replaced the or book with literature and keyboard with noisemaker. Now these are two randomly selected values, so if we type noise or keyboard again, it's actually going to replace it with a different value. So my keyboard is loud. Well, that time it actually replaced it with the same value. Let's test this again. My keyboard is loud. So this time it actually replaced it with input device. So book, 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 key, 
keyboard, keyboard, key, that is not how you spell keyboard, keyboard. So as you can see, we've simply typed in multiple instances of our specified swear words, and um, they've replaced it with story, novel, pages, novel, novel, piano, typing machine, and noisemaker. So we have effectively created our own swear filter. So now all you need to do is add in actual swear words into the swear dictionary, and then you can get something that actually uh, replaces swear words with actual, um, well, words that are acceptable to hear on a daily basis. So thanks for watching this tutorial on how to make a swear filter using a dictionary. Um, the dictionary also has several other applications. Um, some are obvious, some aren't obvious. So please be... Uh, be looking out for the next tutorial on how to use dictionaries. So thanks for watching. Um, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.